17, it's Hubbard. Chuba Hubbard to the end zone. Touchdown. You trade McCaffrey. Drake London is in for the touchdown. I'm sorry, this is my mo. This is my mo. This is how I'm feeling right now. This is how I'm feeling right now. When I have to say, ladies and gentlemen, good morning, good afternoon, good evening, whatever you guys are watching this and whatever you guys are listening to this, it's the trio that you love to listen to. It may be the trio that you love to watch right now because YouTube, how's it going? Hey, we are here for another episode, another division preview for the... Next up, Fantasy Show. It's your boy, Will. And once again, we are back with my other two amigos when it comes to this sh very show. And let me actually get a uh, get an idea how Mr. Manny is feeling. Mr. Manny being Manny, what's going on? How are you doing today? Good. I'm doing great. We, had, uh, we were talking a little bit because the first week one of preseason is officially done. And uh, you guys were excited. You guys got some exciting news. I saw it in the group chat. So I'm excited to talk about it. So I'm pumped. NFC South, here we come. We're going to do our best. And just like what we were talking about before, um, actually, I'll, 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 leave, I'll leave that to the uh, intro as we jump in. So let, let's actually, actually see what Mike is doing. Mike T, how you doing? What's good? Yo, the suspense for that intro was crazy. Um, I didn't know what to do. <laughs> So I appreciate you for that. Appreciate you for that. But hey, it's another good show, NFC South. Let's do it. Have some fun. And that's pretty much how we roll here. We don't have no scripts. We're all improv, like Saturday Night Live. But ladies and gentlemen, we're here at the Next Up Fantasy Show. We take pride in everything that we do with all that we talk about. But this division, my goodness, you thought that the AFC South was terrible. You thought that the AFC South was bad. This division right here said, hold my beer. They said I could top that. Yep. And today we're going to be talking about the NFC South today. And the crazy part about this division is there's players to talk about. There's going to be multiple players that we're going to talk about, but the fact that literally each and every one of these teams was under 500 for the year last year with three of the teams having the same exact record. Ladies and gentlemen, that's just blasphemous. Mm -hmm. It's treacherous. What? It's horrible. What? It sucks. What? It's not good. What? It's wretched. What? Horrid. What? And any other acronym or synonym or whatever word that I'm talking about it can actually be used in here. What? No, that's it. That, that's it. That's all we got, Manny. Uh, <laughs> 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 that understood that reference. Yeah. We all got excited when I started doing that. You know you, no, you, you, right. you, you, you <laughs> It took me a second, and then I was like, wait, I could go with this. <laughs> but... <laughs> But um, but yeah, today we're going to be talking about the the NFC South, and like I said before, three of the teams have the same record, so usually we go from worst to first. So who am I going to go with first in this case? We're going to go with 
Uh, Panda. Panda, Panda, Panda. Atlanta. We're going to talk about Atlanta first. So the Atlanta Falcons, they actually had a good draft this year. And it kind of sucks to say that the only reason why it was good is because they ended up getting someone that's been told or has been said to be a generational talent. One of our hosts said that on this show, but they will still pick, pick Saquon Barkley over them. But B, but Mr. B. John Robinson is a player that you rarely get to see where they are in the first round as far as the projection of being picked in fantasy as well as being a rookie. A couple years ago, we got that as well. And I'm not saying it's going to repeat itself. But that other player, that other player ended up being Najee Harris. And he was okay for that first year. And then he just ended up going downhill. And then we met Jalen Warren. And now we all want Jalen Warren to be the starter. Shout out to Jalen. Um, key departures. There wasn't, there wasn't really that many this year. Um, that, that's of fantasy importance. So that's it's only just Marcus Mariota, uh, which we talked about actually last week. Who actually was who actually did did pretty good this week for uh, for the preseason, but um, ladies and gentlemen, I feel that in this on this team there are somewhat some gems that you can actually look for depending on how what your uh, structure is for your fantasy league. Um, if you're in the range of a best ball league, you can go beyond Bijan. Um, you you can go through uh, Cordero Patterson. You can go through. There's there's another there's another running back. I can't think of it on top of my head. Manny actually knows who it is, but I can't remember the name on top of my head. <laughs> Tyler Aguilar. Thank you, <laughs> Tyler Aguilar. Um, we talked. We actually talked about. We actually did a post about him uh, a couple months ago as well, uh, before the draft. And and of course, there's the wide receivers or there's the uh, pass catchers. Let's call it. And I think the only ones that are in the main front lines, Drake London second year and Kyle Pitts. So Manny, right on top, right on right on top of the dome, right on top of your head. What's the first thing that you think of when it comes to the Atlanta Falcons this year? So the Atlanta Falcons, in my head, I think they shouldn't have drafted B. John Robinson. Um because they had good quality backs already. They had Tyler Aguilar, they had Cordell Patterson. Tyler Aguilar rushed for a thousand yards last year. There's been been news and rumors that he's still going to have a main focal point into this offense. So what's that mean? Does that mean it's cutting down on Bijan Robinson's performance on the field? Bijan is going in the uh, first round, so it kind of scares me on that article. Also, I know you didn't kind of mention it, but Cordell Patterson was a wide receiver. Is he going to shift back to that wide receiver role instead of being the third string overall? Because when he was a wide receiver, he was actually kind of valuable for the team. So there's that. And then there's also uh, Scotty Miller from the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. That could be a sneaky play on like best ball teams or any something like that. You know what? I actually remember. I, I just I remember Scotty Miller from uh, from good old Tampa Bay. He actually wasn't that terrible. No. Um. He he was actually a, a, a he was actually someone that Tom Brady actually relied on every now and then. So that's actually not a it's not a bad thought. But like it's still, well, I mean, it's still the. I mean, there's not really much going on uh, with, well, the, with the wide receivers. But like, imagine drafting Cordell Patterson. That's not even. I don't even think he's going high. I have to double check, but and he becomes their wide receiver option. I mean, it is an option. Um, Mike, what are your thoughts on him? Oh man, welcome to Atlanta. I think um, I like the players individually, um, not really fantasy wise, but individually, I do think they're all solid players. I just think that kind of how Manny said. I, I really don't know what they're doing. Um, they already had a decent running game. I do think that B. John Robinson, like I said last week, is a generational talent. But I don't think he'll get volume that's going to match where you're going to have to take him probably in the draft. Uh, so I probably would shy away from taking him as high as he's going in, in current drafts right now. Excuse me. Um, beyond that, you have Drake London, who I actually do like. 
but I don't really have a lot of faith and trust in um, in Ritter. So right. we're gonna kind of so we're gonna have to see where that goes. Um, their position players, well, like I said, while I do um, I do see that they're skilled players, I probably will try to avoid most of Atlanta players and drafts that I'm in. Um, I really wouldn't be targeting too many of their players because I think it's gonna take a village for that team to be impactful. <laughs> You know, mm-hmm. I think they're all I think they're all going to kind of like eat into each other's stats. And it's going to be hard to really have somebody who's going to be a clear division. I mean, a clear league winner or really do something major for you. So I would I would stay away from Atlanta players in just my opinion. And I'm not I'm not surprised about that. Um, There's one but- player I'm targeting. Young Ho Koo. The kicker. The kicker. <laughs> the kicker is amazing. So he's he really good. is. <laughs> good. He actually is good. But let me ask you: Do you think that the, you think that the Falcons can bring the ball down the field enough for uh, Young Way Koo, or is it Young Way Koo? It's Young Who, or it's Young Who, but I say Young Ho. <laughs> I think I think I actually said a baseball player, honestly. But like, do you do you feel that he has enough? He has the um, leg. To go, go he has the leg. But do you but do you feel that Desmond Ritter and the rest of the offense? Could bring the ball down enough to let's say like the forty or the thirty-five, so that so that he can do the kick. So are they going to yeah. be are they going to be in scoring position enough? Pretty much. Pretty much. I yeah, think, I think so. With the running back with Bijan Robinson, they're definitely going to be in scoring position. They also have Kyle Pitts, um, so they have enough. I honestly don't think I think Desmond Ritter won't be the starter after Week Four. They got Tyler Henneke as their backup, and he's a very solid quarterback. He was okay. He's, but he's I can, better but than most. I, I could see I could see I could see why you believe that Ritter won't be able to do anything, but he's a runner. I mean I can't I can't emphasize that long enough. Uh but he's a runner. Ritter didn't couldn't start over Mar- Mariota. What are we expecting here? He did in the last couple of games. Yeah, I'm saying week one, who was a starter from that like the beginning point. Well, from last year? Yeah. Mariota, because he's actually a better runner. But anyway, so here, okay. So I, I know that you have a, I know you have a question, uh, Manny, but um I just want to I just want to put in a quick question and just do like a without without an explanation, just answer. Bijan Robinson in his current value where he's being drafted right now, or Jameer Gibbs and where he's being picked. Bijan. Mike. And see, this is where fantasy football well, like contradicts a lot of the way I feel about actual football. But I would actually take Gibbs at this point. I'm feeling I Gibbs too. I, I would, man. I'm, I'm, I'm feeling Gibbs I would. too. <laughs> I would. Based on based on the current eighty on, on their current ADPs, I would pick I would pick Gibbs over over Robinson. So. Yep. Okay, so I, I just needed to – I wanted to throw that monkey wrench real quick. So, yeah, uh, Manny, what's your question? All right, so I just said I was going to pick B. John Robinson. But, <laughs> like I said in the past, they had the news come out that Tyler Aguilar is uh, going to have, like, a role in this offense. You still mm-hmm. have Cordell Patterson, but B. John's the talent. Last week, there was rumor that Tyler Aguilar was with the first string team. And Bijan was on the depth chart as number three. So he wasn't even one. He wasn't two. He was three. Are you nervous drafting him as the number nine overall pick, RB4, with these rumors? I know it's early. Like I said, this is we're recording this August 13th. So I want to hear you guys' opinions on this. August 13th, my nephew's birthday. Happy birthday, Dominic, if he ever watches Happy this. birthday, Dominic. Happy he, birthday. He's a You're he's better a, than your uncle. He's only he's only he's only 10. I mean, I don't I don't know how to don't know how to express that, but um I don't I don't think he's we'll talk about that later. Anyway, um so as far as Bijan, like I'm not scared. I'm not concerned, and the biggest reason why is um it's just it's still preseason like i'm not i'm not gonna super rely on what news and notes are unless it kind of seems that it's more important unless it's more emphasized so like um 
depth charts as of right now doesn't really matter that much to me uh, because some of those players could likely be cut. Like Cordell Patterson could be cut, and we and we just and we won't know it, but he's he's on that he's on that depth chart. But like as of right as of right now, especially with Robinson as a rookie, like and 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 it's a uh, some people who actually look at Twitter and look at depth charts like that. Um, sometimes a lot of people actually get that get that information misconstrued. So as of right now, I'm not going to be too concerned. But if there's something that's big enough for me to consider looking into another direction um, from Bijan at that pick, then I'm not concerned. So the the article I'm reading, Cordell Patterson's one, Tyler Aguilar's two. I'm still not concerned. Um. Uh, I'm I'm not concerned, especially with the fact. Um, on top of that, um, Bijan didn't play um, for Atlanta for for this uh, week one preseason. So usually, of course, it's it's majority majority of the time, nine times out of ten, um, a lot of the starters they don't play the first game. Like if it's to the point where they would need to see what he can do, then they would bring him in. But I feel that in this case, the uh, the Falcons probably are well aware. Of what he can do. So that being said, I, I I'm not I'm not I'm not concerned about it at all. I'm a bit concerned only because um, in my mind I see a clear understanding um, of what I think offensively a team like Detroit would want to do with the Jameer Gibbs, as opposed to like in Atlanta where they do have Tyler, who is a great back, Cordell Patterson, who can also be a great back too. Believe it or not, um, I don't. I don't have as clear a cut of a picture of how I think they want to incorporate Bijan Robinson into their running game. So that's my only concern, not concerned about the player and his ability, just concerned about the way they might choose to utilize him in their offensive system. So do you feel that he may be a player that down the line, they would, they would uh, use him more often. And in the beginning, they're going to like slowly introduce him. I do think that's probably what's going to happen. I think Bijan Robinson will be, worthy of his value um, because he has that kind of talent. But I think in the beginning weeks, it might be a little dicey while they're rotating the rock, kind of trying to, to see who that main guy is. You also got to realize, too, that the running back situations now in the NFL in real life, mm-hmm. it's kind of a big situation. They don't want they don't want to basically run their running back to the ground, kind of like what Dallas did to Zeke. They want them exactly. to long term. So it's it's – it's going to be a new style of running backs. Everyone's getting two running backs and using them. There's not really a three down back anymore. I can see that. That's a fair assessment. And speaking of a team that doesn't have a thir- a three down back, we're going to go down to the place that is the home of Popeye's chicken, New Orleans. Them Saints. Also seven and ten. But this, you okay? <laughs> yeah, I mean, I'm talking about. I I kind of get it because you could have said the home of you Miles. Can... De- I mean, my. I mean, the home of uh, Louis Armstrong. Or you could have said. You could have said so many other things. The birthplace of jazz. This man picked Popeye's chicken of all things. So I get it. I get it. But uh, I liked it. Though. I liked it. <laughs> Oh, you go. You're trying to get some sponsors here. Popeye's chicken. If you if you hear us, holler at me. Uh, <laughs> oh yeah, let's go. Or maybe I'm just hungry. I don't know. But um, okay. So New Orleans, New Orleans Saints, also at seven and ten, they beefed up a little bit this year. Manny's still tripping. They beefed up this year <laughs> with. A plethora of interesting players. I'm not going to say good players. I'm not going to say bad players. I'm going to say interesting for right now. Intriguing. Um, they got sick and tired of Jameis Winston getting hurt, throwing interceptions, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. So they ended up picking up Derek Carr. Alvin Kamara came out here, beat somebody in an elevator, got suspended three games. So they ended up drafting K- Kendra Miller. Ended up picking up Jamal Williams, which I which at first I thought that was going to be a good move, until they ended up also picking up Kareem Hunt. And we all know what Kareem Hunt, actually both Kareem Hunt and Jamal Williams, we know what both of them can do. 
Um, Jamal Williams, uh, leader of uh, rushing touchdowns last year. Kareem Hunt, um, a pass catching specialist. Um, Foster Moreau, also who who also came out to uh, New Orleans from Oakland, along with or Las Vegas, along with Derek Carr. But barely any departures um, of any importance. But again, this team intrigues intrigues me. Let's get away from the Alvin Kamara situation for the th- for the three games, and you still have weaponry everywhere. And last year, my first thought was. Get a get a get a quarterback, and then we can talk business. Derek Carr will get you by in real in real life. He'll in real life he'll get you three hundred yards multiple times in a game, um, in games. Excuse me. Um, you still have Michael Thomas, who wasn't that terrible in in their preseason game that we're watching behind me. You still have Chris Olave, who's going to be a monster, in which I finally pronounced his last name correct. And outside of Foster Moreau, there actually is an interesting um, tight end in Jawan Johnson, who, as weird as it sounds, led the Saints last year in passing touchdowns with with or with pass catching touchdowns uh, with seven. And I gotta say, and, and their defense is still the same, and their new coach is was their defensive coordinator. So all of that being said, New Orleans is brewing up something, something really nice, and I'm actually kind of all for it with them. And compared, well, definitely compared to everybody else in this division, it's kind of a who else could it be? But um but yeah, I'm actually kind of a fan of this. And um, Mike, what are your general thoughts about the New Orleans Saints? Yeah, I have a couple of things, uh, things to say about New Orleans. Uh, I think the key issue is really when will Alvin Kamara play? Um, as you had stated before, he had a little incident. Um, we're not exactly sure if the suspension will take place this year. Um, I think the trial might be going on now um, during preseason. I'm not sure if this is going to happen this year or if they're going to push the suspension towards next year. So we just don't know. So from that, that's kind of the elephant in the room. We really don't know like what, what's going to happen with that. So that's going to have a big impact on the team as far as when you're going to choose to draft him or when you may choose to draft the other running backs. Um, Derek Carr. I like Derek Carr. I think I like Derek Carr probably a little more than, than you guys do. Um, I think that Derek Carr is usually probably valued as like a low-end QB2, probably like a low-end QB2. Right. Um, I think it's potential to be like average uh, or maybe even – and this is maybe bold, but I think at the end of the year, he could be in the top 12 dis- discussion. I really do. Um, I think Derek Carr has weapons, and I think that as long as the offensive line can protect him, it wouldn't surprise me um, if he can reach his potential. So I think where you can get him right now, um, what is he? Uh, I'm not exactly sure what his age is. He is, but I know he's not like in that top echelon of quarterbacks. So, from right. where, so we're from, from where you can get him, I think his value is actually pretty good. So I, I might look after him or go after him for a QB too. I think he's decent. Um, I was going to come on here and give Jamal Williams so much love, but yeah, the Kareem Hunt thing kind of killed that. So, but with that being, with that being said, I still do. No, think give give him some love. Come on. He's still, he's still, he's still a decent, yeah, he's still a decent back. I mean, what is he? I think he's like running back thir- 37 or something like that. He's in the thirties. Right. So for, for you can get him, he's durable. He, you know, he's still a decent back. So I, it's not a problem if you want to go and get Jamal Williams, but yeah, the, he could have probably been somebody who could have been a really big sleeper pick for you, and Kareem Hunt's kind of killed that noise. So we'll, we'll keep it moving. Um, as far as players to avoid from their team, uh, I like Olave and all those guys, but I really didn't want to speak on them, and I'm not saying I would avoid them. Um, but one player I would avoid, and it pains me to say being an Ohio State fan, is Michael Thomas. I just, I just think his best days are behind him. Um, now, when you can get Michael Thomas in the draft, that name and his potential, if he could – be anything of what he used to be we'll probably still make him a safe bet because you could probably get him like round 10 or like after that and right. there's not really many there's not really many other wide receivers so you can like profoundly say we better than him at that point in the draft but just for me i think there's other options younger options um 
other ways I would choose to go this year if I was drafting at that point in the draft. So that's kind of how I feel about New Orleans as a whole. Um, Manny? New Orleans, New Orleans, New Orleans. I had them winning last year, um, and I think they got a little better with Derek Carr. Um, what sucks with Derek Carr is what happened to him in Vegas. They basically he said he would play for free, and they still said, no, we, we want Jimmy G. For what reason, I have no idea. Um, I like Chris Olave. My question, I guess, like with Derek Carr, he dumps off to his tight end. He had Darren Waller, right? So I think, like you said, is a sneaky pick could be uh, Jawan Johnson. Also, yeah. don't don't put some respect into Jimmy Graham, Graham's name because he just got picked up by them for his, <laughs> probably his last season. Um, and you got Taysom Hill. These guys are tight end heavy. Um, but, yeah, I think Chris Olave is the only one I'm really looking at. I wanted Kareem Hunt, um, but there's too much. There's Jamal Williams and, like, Mike was saying with Elvin Kamara's uncertain uncertainty, we have what four games suspension um, was like the ruling, but when is he going to actually do the suspension? Right. So I'm assuming that they're planning on doing it quickly because they got cream hunt, but Jamal Williams was my guy. Now I can't draft him. They also, I mean, Jamal, Jamal Williams is going higher, a lot higher than Kareem Hunt right now. So you could see value at Kareem Hunt if you think he's going to be the RB1. Now, here's here's an interesting question I, I just pulled up. Um, I was actually looking at um, – I was looking at a couple of uh, sports books that do uh, prop bets for, for, uh, for the season, and a lot of them are on the statistical side. And here's one of them that actually came up. Um, out of these – one, two, three – out of these five quarterbacks – Who's going to get the most passing yards? And I want your guys' opinion on this. I think we're talking about um, Derek Carr. So Derek Carr is one of them. Matthew Stafford. Geno Smith. Russ Wilson. Deshaun Watson. Well, it's that- out of, I think it's going to be out of Deshaun Watson and – I saw the Broncos play in their pre. I don't watch preseason that much, and I saw them play. Sean Payton, you said that starters don't play. Sean Payton's like, nope, my starters are going to play the whole first half, and they looked terrible. They couldn't get anything going on their third playing against their third string. So he scares me. But it is a new coach, new coaching staff. I could see Russell getting some. Uh, I think it's out of Deshaun Watson and Russell Wilson, to be honest with you. Hmm. Okay, Mike. You know, man, my head tells me to go to Sean Watson, but my heart kind of likes Geno. I, 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 I might nod towards Geno. I really like Geno Smith. <laughs> so, yeah, I might go I might go with Geno on that. I'm a, that's where I'm going to go. I wouldn't blame you for Geno. Um, Will's going, Derek. We, 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 know, we know Derek Carr's a gunslinger. That's kind of why I mentioned it, and I'm actually surprised that no one even picked him. But I think, I, I think actually I would uh, – actually, I might pick Deshaun on that. <laughs> I, I not, not to cut you off, but the reason I picked him over um, Carr, Deshaun, I would say, that's what I said, my head tells me Deshaun, but my heart tells me Gino. Uh, the reason I picked Gino over Carr is because, well, Carr has weapons all over the place. So does right. Gino. I mean, you got Metcalf, you got Lockett, you got Jackson Smith, the Jigba. So I really like what Gino has. And you got you got Manny's boy, Kenneth Walker. So, I mean, yeah, I like Gino's team a lot. And trust me, on, on the NFC West show, I am going to be talking about the Seahawks a lot. Spoiler. All right, Great. Manny, what what is your what is your question? The question was <laughs> mostly to uh, the running back situation with Alvin Kamara. We, I mean, it seems like I'm going to back to back running back questions because you have Jamal Williams there, you have you have Alvin Kamara there, you have, now have Kareem Hunt, you also have that rookie. Uh, is it Kendra Miller as Kendra, well? Kendra Miller. Uh, yeah. Um, from TCU. So I'm, I'm like, I think it's too many. They're all good quality to when you get too many eggs in one basket, you just don't want any of them. And that's kind of how I'm feeling right now. So how are you guys feeling? If you had to pick one, which one do you want and why? Go, go ahead, Mike. 
I was going to say, are we factoring in Kamara's suspension? We're going to factor that in, right? Yes. So here, let me help, let me throw this in here so it kind of helps you guys. Um, so Hunt, let's go to Kamara first. Elvin Kamara. Elvin. I could spell his name right. All right. So Elvin Kamara is going in. Oh. Sorry, folks that are listening. I can't. But um, 63rd overall, running back 25. So remember that. Williams, Jamal Williams, is going. Jamal Williams is going 97 overall, running back 36. So lower. You got Hunt. That's going RB 53, 152nd overall. So I'll just That's cut it off on those three. I so feel. which ones do you guys – what are you thinking? Well, yeah, with that current value, I'd go with Hunt all day um, just because you can shore up other needs and get a guy like Hunt later who will probably definitely factor in. Like you said, they brought him in for a reason. Um, so I'd, I'd go Kareem Hunt. I'm going to go Kamara still. Like, I know that um, with Hunt, Hunt can likely take over the actual position itself after these three games. These three games could be, like, his um, – It's three games, not four, right? Three. Okay, I said four. My bad. So, yeah. three games. So, so, this could be, so, this could be his audition. And Jamal Williams will still be, will still be the brute back or the pass catching back. Like, um, Hunt and Williams could be that. But I, I – Originally, I wouldn't mind Miller originally, but like with the injury right now, I want to see how his, I want to see how the injury goes at first before I answer that question. But, um, but right now, but as of right now, I would probably still, I, I would actually say Kamara and that's probably surprising. Do you have more fit? Here's another question. I just popped in my head. Do you guys have more yeah. faith in, uh, and Jawan Johnson or Kyle Pitts, based on their tight end ADP. And I'll give that to you right now. We have, I think Jawan Johnson, you can get him for free. Like he's like like he's probably not even getting picked. But like there, I know I know there's some people that are slowly starting to uh, gravitate towards uh, Johnson. But like he's probably going in really really late. He's tight end twenty. And you know Pitts is still high at tight end five. Um, I'm not. I'm not a big. I'm not a big Kyle Pitts fan, but the potential is there. At some point, you feel like he's got to break out. So I'd probably go with Kyle Pitts in that situation. Genuinely speaking, I'm feeling that this is my last opportunity that I'm going to give Kyle Pitts. <laughs> to be honest, um, the the. With with Desmond Ritter, like I don't think that Ritter has enough of an arm. He has an arm, but I don't think it's enough of an arm uh, to keep going to keep going deep with uh, Drake London or whatnot. So um, Deacon Dunk passes to the tight end. Um, I could see with Kyle, with Kyle Pitts. So I'm kind of leaning towards Kyle Pitts um, overall and his with his current value because like even though he's um, tight end you said number five like i, th I think it, what what round is he in i think he was like I seven it is 50 or 67 overall so 67 yeah so like so yeah so about so about mid fifth round mid mid late for fifth round i wouldn't mind that i mean he has I, so I much i'm sorry i didn't mean to didn't mean to cut you off well no, no. um he has so much talent. It's almost like um, we'll remember this name. Remember Vernon Davis, your guy? Yes, of it, course. It, 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 it took him a while to get going. But once he got going, like year three, I believe, year four, like he was a beast. I could see Kyle Pitts doing that. But the fact that he hasn't done it so far, it does. I'm like, Will, it's like this is probably your last opportunity to show me something. Right. Because we know we know the talent's there. We're talking about Atlanta tight end on New Orleans uh, segment. But we, I like – I like I like Kyle Pitts this year. I really I really really do. But this is the last chance. I can't I can't uh, deal with it anymore. But Juwan but Juwan Johnson once again, 
the kid's all right. I, I am a fan of uh, Juwan Johnson as well, but like he's more so he he's not consistent enough for me to uh, rely on him. He he can give you zero points in like four games, and that's not cool. Um, since we did since we did a bunch of uh, since we did a bunch of like breaks since Manny wanted to look up stuff, I'm gonna take a small break right now. And do something about this light because it's bright as shit in here. Excuse me. <laughs> Jeez. Can you believe this, Mike? I'm out. Our, I'm out. our. Uh, I mean, it's it's just so unprofessional, and I just hope that know. The, the listeners and the viewers can. He's gonna you have to apologize or something. He's gonna edit. He's gonna edit this out now. Who knows? <laughs> maybe, maybe I won't. Maybe I'm too lazy to do it. Actually, I I am I am gonna be too lazy to do it. So. Well, sorry, viewers. <laughs> and we're back, and I'm more relaxed. So, the very... It's my damn show. So, next. <laughs> What's next, and, Will? What was that? I don't know. You said next. Yeah, I'm about to say. Next up, Carolina Panthers. Oh, God. Can we skip them? So, next up. No. Uh, we, no, we got to talk about them. All right, so <laughs> Carolina Panthers, also at 7-10. and 10. No surprise since we talked about that before. And they got the number one overall pick. They ended up getting themselves a Bryce Young. It was a question as far as it was, if it was going to be him or CJ. They selected Young. A couple other players that ended up adding, getting added was Adam Thielen from Minnesota. 70, 70, uh, 70 catch a year last year. Miles Sanders, as good as he is, he I, I don't think that he actually lived up to his expectations fully. Um, Jonathan Mingo, who they who they drafted, who we'll talk about in a little bit later. DJ Shark from uh, from Jacksonville, who I was a fan of, and uh, the key departures from in this case Deontay Foreman, who we always who we argued a lot about last year. Actually, between Deontay Foreman, Chuba Hubbard, Deontay Foreman, Chuba Hubbard, which one are you picking and things like that? If that was, those were fun times last year. Shout out to last year. But for, for this team, they really packed it in last in, in the middle of last year. Um, and I don't know how I even forgot DJ Moore also left. They put in, they took out one DJ, put in another DJ. DJ. So no more, so no more, no more uh DJ Moore. No more Christian McCaffrey. No more Cam Newton, even though that was like a thing like two years ago. There's a lot of no mores here. So this is the this is them starting over and the I remember when they drafted Bryce Young, my immediate reaction. Um, that I posted on our uh, Instagram was he's good, but it's going to take him time to get used to the system and getting used to um, being in the, just generally being in the pros. And this might actually be another down year for Carolina, which really sucks. But like with those around, with, with those around Bryce Young in general, what can you do? Right. So Miles Sanders, I want I want to be a fan of him, but like I feel that just like what Manny was talking about, we're in a different league now where everything is more 50-50 when it comes to your running backs. So you have Miles Sanders and you also have uh Chuba Hubbard still there. So they could still so it could still go 50-50. And we're all I think all of us are Chuba Hubbard fans. I think we all are. I don't know. But um the wideouts in Adam Thielen and DJ Shark, like I can't trust me personally, I can't trust Adam Thielen in this stage of his career as a number one wideout, if they're making him the number one wideout, that'll be awkward if they did, but probably doing it because of experience. Um, Jonathan Mingo, I feel um, we talked about earlier. I feel that he'll be a person that he'll eventually shine, but it's not going to be in the beginning of the year. It'll be probably more so if things go to plan the way I'm thinking, then Carolina is going to um, drop a good amount of the year. And then from there, Jonathan Mingo is going to get his time when they're 100% out of contention. 
Um, let's see. Do, 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 do. Who, who, did I, who did I go to first last time? I think Maddie. I, I'll take it. Anybody remember? Okay. Mike, go for it. Yeah, man. Um, shout out Bryce Young. I really like Bryce Young, but they throw my boy to the Wolves. Um, I don't really want any action with any um, Panther player this year. I do think that Miles Sanders is intriguing. I think I'm probably a little higher on him than you are. Mm-hmm. But with that being said, he had a really productive year last year with probably the league's best offensive line. He will not have that in Carolina. So it's is he really a top 12 back, right? Probably not. <laughs> so, you know, uh, shout out Miles Sanders. But, yeah, it's going to be a little tough in, um, in North Carolina. But I like – the players on the team, I think Jonathan Mingo, I mean, all these players I think will be great in the future, but for fantasy purposes, I really wouldn't feel comfortable drafting them. Um, maybe a Chuba Howard, a Hubbard, excuse me, later on in a draft might be a sneaky good pick because he's somebody who um, probably will get some playing time um, alongside of Miles Sanders, but I don't want any part of that wide receiver core. I don't want any part of Bryce Young and yeah, I mean, unfortunately I just really can't support them from a fantasy perspective this year. Um, <laughs> and that's pretty simple. Uh, Manny, thoughts? Uh, my thoughts are, I learned this fast in fantasy football, and if you're just starting, don't pick players that you think the team's going to suck. This team's going to be competing for the number one pick again. So I don't think there's going to be a lot of points again. So I'm not picking any of these guys. No matter what the talent was, I screwed up last year and tried to get DJ Moore. And it didn't turn out really well for me. He's a great player, but on a bad team. So there could be great players on this team. There's not going to be a lot of production on this team. Uh, Bryce Young, I feel bad to get like Mike was saying and Will, because just like C.J. Stroud, his best wide receiver core was back in college. He's actually downgraded coming to the pros. Um, so I don't think Bryce Young is going to do that great either. Uh, I just had a question and I forgot what it was going to be. Um, actually, just for giggles, Bryce Young or CJ Stroud this year? Who has the better year? The better year? Neither. They're both going to get benched. I, I think Bryce Young, actually. I go, I go Bryce Young. Red Rocket's about to come and take over. And the reason I say Bryce Young is because I think they're going to give him a longer leash. I think that if anybody would get benched, it'd probably be C.J. Stroud. I, I think Carolina will give Bryce Young the whole season. I really think they're invested in him. They named him the starter for, like, from the jump. I, mean, I think he would have to just be horrendous for them to, like, not put him in. So I'll say Bryce Young, but, yeah, I don't know. It's going to be tough. They're both going to have really, really hard seasons this year. And, Manny, it just sounds like you just don't really care about this question at all. No, uh, Davis Mills will be the starter, and Andy Dalton will be the starter by the end of the year. Could give, me, give, me a, give me a week. What week are they are are they both going to start? Like Mike said, C.J. Stroud being the number one pick, or sorry, Bryce Young being the number one. They're both like top ten, I guess. So it's, I think it's irrelevant in that aspect. I guess I think around week ten, I could see them switching it up. My question would be this though: If you're losing, why switch it up? Like, wouldn't you want to give? Let's continue to let your guy get that experience. I mean, I'm just asking a question. I mean, why would you switch it up? If they were in contention and or something and the run and the quarterback was holding them back, I would understand switching it up. But if they're losing, why why switch it up? For Texans, because Davis Mills is still young and could be their quarterback. Okay. I guess with Carolina, there's really no future. There's, with no, there's, there's nobody else. Yeah, but with Davis Mills, you also have uh the other young guy for Texans, so they could kind of switch it up. All three of them could start at potentially throughout the year. See, look at you. You're talking about Davis Mills more than I did last year. That's <laughs> well, um, I don't know. I just like I feel bad for CJ Shroud, like Bryce Young. They had their better wide receiver core was in college. Did you? I mean, do you know who CJ Shroud's wide receiver core was? Mike, yeah, yeah. Mike, like, who was who was they had Chris Olave, Garrett Wilson, who am I missing? Marvin Harrison Jr., which he's going to be the number one wide receiver this year. They got, yeah, they got a, a, a what's that guy's name? Abegua or Ibequa, whatever his name is. He's better than anybody on the, either of these squads. He's not even in the NFL yet. I mean, the, I mean, Seahawks, they, the guy that got yeah. drafted from the Seahawks, what's his name? Jigba. He's 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 super dope. And then the, uh, they have another dude who's like their third wide receiver. 
uh, what's his name? I can't think of his name right now, but he probably would be better than, than these guys on this team, which is crazy because he's third wide receiver for Ohio State. So, yeah, it's 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 tough. just insane, it's, exactly. <laughs> and, and the same and the same thing with Bryce Young throwing to Jamison Wilson and throwing to um, uh, well, to Bryce Young throw to last year uh, or way through Jamison Wilson the year before, but last year he had um. Hmm. Receiver maybe he wasn't. Maybe I don't know. Maybe their receivers weren't as potent. Definitely not as potent as Ohio State's. I can't think of who the receivers he was throwing to were right now. But um, they're probably still better than what he's throwing to now. Ohio State or Carolina Panthers? Who win, Who wins the game? I think Carolina Panthers, but Ohio State receiving core is amazing. We're not losing to Carolina. <laughs> Forty-two to three. Love it. <laughs> Uh, Manny, do you have a question for us? It's okay if you don't. It's the I Panthers. Don't, I don't with these, not with this. I don't have a question. Just don't you draft don't. anybody. And I guess if you were, who's your top player that you're going for? And in my case, it's no one. If it was anybody, it would be Miles Sanders. But there's there's not that that's really digging in the barrel there as far as um any options or whatnot. So like if anybody, it, it would be Miles Sanders. Uh, oh, blank well, blank well, screen, Mike thesis. What do you think? He got booted. <laughs> Chuba Hubbard would probably be mine though, to be honest for that depth of running back. Like he's not gonna get drafted. It's easy to put him on the bench just in case something happens to Miles Sanders. Chuba, and Chuba Hubbard's good. Like he, he he's a good player. Yeah. Um, you guys are getting a treat today. Uh, there he is. There's Mike. Hey. My, you my good? apologies, guys. Yeah, no, yeah, I have, I have family, and my daughter was trying to contact me, so. No, fa- yeah. family's super We're important. important. Yeah. Family's super important. Yeah. So we, so we, Do you we notice started. that Will's shirt keeps getting more and more unbuttoned since the episode keeps going longer and longer? You think so? Thanks. Lean back yeah. again, Will. It's summertime, Will. Go ahead. Do what that. you got to do. Do what you got to You got that Cuban, that Cuban vibe? That Cuban vibe, I feel you. <laughs> <laughs> right, so what, okay, so are you playing? I should, I should, uh, for for the last thing, the Tampa Bay Buccaneers, since we're going, since we're going down to the, yeah. uh, to sure, Florida, should, should, I, should, I, should I do the one, the, the one more button? Yeah, let's go. Okay, there it is. All right, there yeah, it is. Wait, wait, Mike, you, you made Mike turn off his screen. I had oh. to turn my screen off. I couldn't, <laughs> I couldn't deal with that. <laughs> All right, Tampa Bay. I couldn't, I couldn't deal with that, Will. So, no, I'm just <laughs> no, it's, your back. Yeah. And that's what's important. Uh, so t- <laughs> what does that say? <laughs> <laughs> We're having fun here, um, believe it or not. So final team who found a way to win the division with an under 500 Brady. record. They had Tom Brady. Okay, well, well said. That's why is they the, is the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. <laughs> Um, eight and nine record last year. The key additions, there wasn't really too many, too, too many. Uh, Baker, May- Baker Mayfield ended up signing, so he's in a quarterback battle with him and Kyle Trask. Um, we got Chase Edmonds who ended up signing. Uh, there's no more Leonard, there's no Leonard Fournette, he's gone, and there's no more Tom Brady because he decided to uh retire and just do Tom Brady stuff. <laughs> Don't know what that is, but. I'll never get to that level because I'm not Tom Brady. So a lot of the departures actually, even though it's not fantasy relevant or relevant, bleh, a lot of the departures actually came from the defensive side for Tampa Bay. And Tampa Bay was kind of going downhill anyway when it came to defense last year. And simply – it's to the point where like, can you even trust Tampa Bay on the defensive side? And there's, so, there's so many like sports books. There's so many predictions saying that Tampa Bay is going to have one of the worst records in the league this year. It's going to be like a battle between them, the Texans and uh, the Arizona Cardinals, which we'll talk about eventually. Panthers about to be like, hold my beer. <laughs> you really think? We'll, 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 we'll look into that. That's a maybe. Um, Not maybe. The offensive weapons are still there. They still have Mike Evans. 
They still have Chris Godwin. They have a second year Rashad White. They have a third Gage. year. They have what was that? Russell Gage. They have Russell Gage. He did he did sign for them, yes. But they got Baker Mayfield. <laughs> so so a lot of so a lot of these questions that are coming into everyone's mind is this might even though they were the first place last year, this might be the one team that we talk less about. So I guess the question from here is like what like like Manny, um I'll I'll go to you first. Like what do you really expect out of Tampa Bay? I expect them to be we'll see when I pick my divisions, but I think they're gonna be, you know, second or third in their division. Um because of how bad it is. They do have key players. Mike Evans is a stud, like you said. Um, Chris Godwin is a stud. I'm a little nervous. Here's a sneaky pick for everyone. Today, Rashad White suffers a non-contact injury. They haven't listed on what happened, but if he's out, you better go get Chase Edmonds if you're already drafted. And if you're about to draft, pick him up. And the non-contact injuries are actually the ones that are the worst. It's off a handoff, um, too. So Yeah, so if Rashad White is really like that, if that's really the case for Rashad, then then yeah, Kareem Hunt, maybe not exactly, or not Kareem Hunt, uh, Chase Edmonds, maybe not the the most huge bump, but it is at least someone to look to look after. Especially um, if you already did your drafts. If you did your drafts already, Chase Edmonds probably wasn't picked up. Like very likely, um, because that that Chase Edmonds uh, signing was, I don't think that was too long ago. Actually, it might might have been a couple of months. I can't recall. Um, Mike, thoughts? Um, Tampa Bay. First and foremost, I can't stand Baker Mayfield. Um, ever since he planted that flag in Columbus, <laughs> I just I don't know. So take that information uh, as you will. But um, yeah, I don't know. Go. I'm Team Kyle Trask. Take that job. Uh, but um, <laughs> beyond that, man, um, I like Chris Godwin. I think Chris Godwin is a, is a decent player. He had like 104 catches last year. Uh, large volume of targets, but Tom Brady's not there. So is he going to get that kind of attention, that kind of um, love with Baker Mayfield or Kyle Trask? Probably not. But I do think that he is a better pickup than Mike Evans, which surprisingly uh, Manny told me he was going earlier than Mike Evans. I, I can kind of see why, because I do think that he's a better player at this point in the career. Right. Um, Mike Evans, I think we could probably get him like in the sixth or seventh round, which sounds crazy because you used to really have to invest a lot to get Mike Williams. But then when I looked at like the people that are around Mike Williams, Evans. I saw, um, or, or excuse me, I'm, thank you, Mike Evans. When I look at the people that are around Mike Evans. Uh, I saw that you could pro beneath them, you could get George Pickens, you could get Jordan Addison, you could get Brandon Cooks <laughs> at lower value than you could get Mike Evans. I'd rather have all three of those players because all three of those players have better quarterbacks and play in better offensive systems. Uh, with Pittsburgh being arguably, you could say they're the same, but definitely Cooks and Addison are in better situations than Mike Evans, I feel. So, I would probably avoid him. Um, Rashad White's injured, or if he has a soft, um, a soft, you know, injury or whatever, or no contact injury, then I don't know if I would invest much in him. Even though I wouldn't anyway, I would probably try to avoid the running backs. When I was looking at the strength of schedule, I think the running backs for them is like twentieth, and mm -hmm. I don't really think they have. I don't really think they have a running back who's good enough to offset the fact that they have the twentieth hardest schedule for running backs. So I'd stay away from the backfield completely. Um, so with that being said, I guess I might go after Chris Godwin for the right price, but I would avoid Mike Evans and I wouldn't touch Baker or anybody else on offense. Mike Evans for each of his every, each and every year that he's played thousand yards pass uh, catching, excuse me, receiving. Does it That's end? Jamison William or Jamison Winston also. True. Does it, does it end this year? Mike. All right, every, every everyone on the podcast, they you, you can't see it, but they're 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 nodding their head. Yeah. Yes, yeah. So, yes. I forget <laughs> sometimes I forget sometimes it's not always visual. We need that audio too. So yes. <laughs> <laughs> I'm waiting for someone to say something. I mean, come on. <laughs> Where does I was like? thinking? I was thinking because like Baker Mayfield is can be as comparable to Jamison Winston at sometimes, 
And so if he did it with Winston, there's potential that he could do it with Mayfield. But he's getting older. That's the thing. That'll be interesting. So do you think Kyle Trask uh, plays it? Well, I feel he's going to play eventually. But, like, do you feel that Kyle Trask is going to – I don't know. Well, I'll kind of compare it to what you did with Bryce Young. Do you feel that around week 10, we see Trask coming in? I don't think Baker's as, as horrible as what people put it out to be. He led the Browns to a playoff game. And this, this is when the Browns were like going through quarterback after quarterback that he actually brought them back to relevancy. He's not horrible. He went to the Rams and the Rams were, this is when the Rams were all diminished. Like there was no one. And he kept it kind of afloat. I think he could do do some da- – like, he could be the starter at Tampa Bay. He's not expected to do much. So, you don't see – you don't see uh, – so, Baker Mayfield starts all 17. See, I kind of I kind of disagree, um, kind of for the same opposite reason or the same reason, whatever works for what I'm trying to say, uh, that we were talking about last time. I can actually see a reason why you might want to just give Kyle Trask a shot. They're losing. Um, let's say they're in last place in their division. Nothing's happening. Baker's been starting the first 10, 12 weeks. Hey, when we have five weeks left, let's throw Kyle Trask in there and see what he can do. So I could actually see Kyle Trask getting an opportunity to play. But, of course, I think Baker will be given the opportunity first. Of course. My thing is I see Tampa Bay. I see Tampa Bay Falcons and Saints all trying to battle for the division. They're all going to be bad, but they're all going to be battling. You know what? Since you are bringing it up, let's just get to it. Division predictions. I need to know what you guys think about this division. Trash. So, well, besides the obvious. <laughs> Look at Will with his taco meat out. Look at that. How can anyone see it? It's this is different. Meat. You it's see different. that? It hits yeah. different? It's a little different, man. You light got- a candle or something? What's going on? Yeah, you got Mike <laughs> stunned. When you asked him a question, he was in amaze and just staring at you. Yeah. didn't even answer. I'm just saying. <laughs> I'm just saying. That's what it was. <laughs> we need to get sponsors. We need to change the demographics sometimes. So, for the ladies. <laughs> so. <laughs> you see this thing? Did you notice this? It's He's second in time. He's yeah. in <laughs> <laughs> I think it's- Taking vocal lessons or something. I don't know. But he's, yeah, he's, he's ready. He's ready. He was singing well, DJ's name. DJ. I was like, what's going on? They don't know about the flavors. Well, but we'll save that for, for another time. We'll save that for another episode. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not sure which one, but we're going to save that for another one. Putting down shirt, right. singing, you know, thinking about Popeyes. I don't know what's going on with Will over there. Like I said, I'm worldwide. That's what I do. So, division predictions. We need some right now. We could talk about Popeyes another time. Chicken sandwich. Um, who do I want? Who do I want to go fire first? You know, what? I'll, I'll, I'll go. I'll go first. All right. So, get my get myself all big and everything. Hey. All right. So, fourth place. Ooh. I'm gonna say Carolina Panthers. I just feel again that they're gonna be another. It's gonna be another year where they just like phone at home throughout the whole entire season. Uh, third place, I'm going to say Tampa Bay. Tampa Bay, I I love their weapons, but there's not anything that jumps out that makes me say consistency or battling for first again. So I don't think that they'll they'll repeat this year. So I'll take them as third place. So second place, see, this one is actually interesting. Because I can see Atlanta actually battling to win this division. But New Orleans got so much better <laughs> this year. So, and their, de- and their defense are, is still intact. And the Saints were always one of the better uh, defensive teams in the league. So, that being said, second place, I'm going to say Atlanta. And to win the division, I'm, pick- I'm picking New Orleans Saints. But I can see, but again, I could see Atlanta being neck and neck with them, even though a lot of people probably won't believe that. But I can see Atlanta trying to get a run, trying to make a trying to make a run for it. But this is New York, this is New Orleans uh division this year. 
Now, which All one right. of you two wants to go next? I'll take it. I'll I can take it. it. Um, I actually have. I agree. I agree with you on Carolina. They'll be in last. Unfortunately, I'm a little too young. I do like the pieces for the future, but this year's not going to get it done. After that, I think I'm going to agree with you and say Tampa Bay. Uh, Tampa Bay in third. Uh, I just think that that combination of Baker Mayfield and Kyler Trask, with um, with the regression shown from Mike Evans and a defense who really wasn't top notch last year. Um, so when Dallas played them in the playoffs, we lit them up. Um, they're they're you know they they kind of they won that division by default because they had Tom Brady, like Manny said earlier. So I think that they're going to stumble. They'll be in third. In second place, and this was what was interesting when you were explaining your thing, Will, because I thought you were going to go where I was going to go, and I was going to be like, wow, that's crazy. But I've been in my lab, you know, doing my Dexter thing, mixing <laughs> up mi- mixing up this this combination of, of, you know, to create this monster. And I, I feel and I feel that I feel that this is the year at Atlanta's going to win the division. So I got New Orleans in second. I New Orleans in second. I think Derek Carr will make an impact. But the one thing – and it's going to be close, like Will said. But the reason I like Atlanta is because I think Atlanta's identity will be to run the ball. And I think they have three players that can do that for them. And I think if they stay true to that identity and play defense, I can see them being sneaky and winning this division. So it's going to surprise a lot of people, like Will said, but I actually have Atlanta winning the division um, this year. I was so close to actually picking Atlanta. You have no idea how close see? I was. <laughs> Um, but yeah, I, I, I gotta go with Saints there. That it's it's the defense really for me. Uh when it, when it comes to uh, New Orleans. Um uh, before I go, if you could rank the defenses in these divisions, what would you go? Saints one. Who do you got two? Wow. <laughs> um I'd probably go Atlanta, but they're all like, you know. Yeah, they're all they're all the same tier. Um I would say New Orleans first. Because this is this is my prediction. I, I go by predictions off defense. Defense wins champions. I'll just tell you right now, Carolina's cheeks, they're going to go fourth overall. They're going to go last place. Third, and this is where I get – you guys are going to be like, wow, is because I go defense. I don't think Atlanta's defense is that great. So, okay. Falcons, and just like Mike said, their identities want to run. When they're behind, I don't trust – I do not trust Desmond Ritter to get them back into the game. They have the three-headed monster. It's going to be tough for them. To, if they fall behind, tough to go. And that's kind of like the Eagles. Eagles are a, a level, a couple levels higher than what the Falcons are trying to do. But that was Eagles' downfall. Once they got behind, they kind of didn't know how to get back, right, because they had their they had their plan of running. Um, so I have Falcons third. I have Tampa Bay, two, just because of their defense, is a solid defense. They were injured last year, and that's why they were getting torched. If they stay healthy, they're a good defense. They were a decent defense uh, a couple years ago when they won the Super Bowl. So um, I have Tampa Bay at second, but the Saints defense, is, I think, is the best in this division, and that's why I'm going with Saints as number one. So I kind of based in mind when it's, when it's all bad teams, I go right to the defense, and that's kind of what I did. 100% fair. So we got New Orleans, New Orleans, Atlanta. Um, no. Uh, yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> but um, I'm really – I'm actually curious to see how – that that's going to be my curiosity this year of how uh, how does Atlanta do this year. Uh, how they do this year, of course, it will impact what they do for the future. But the thing, like, that's, the thing that's tough about this division is Saints at home is tough and Atlanta at home is really tough. So – I could see where you guys are. They could sneak a couple games at home. Atlanta Stadium has a Chick Fil A. Yes, it does. <laughs> yes, it does. <laughs> oh, we'll need some chicken. But on Sundays, <laughs> they're closed. So why do they have a Chick Fil A in there if they're closed on Sundays? When in, in likely their most busiest time of the day or busy busiest time of the week likely it's to get their falcons fans riled up for the game it's one of life's mysteries man it doesn't make sense i'm pretty sure i'm pretty sure they do other things but like that that just does not make sense to me so if chick-fil-a if you're listening holla all right so next up 
we only have two divisions left. And it's going to be either I'm going to be flexing my 49ers jersey next week. Or we're going to have a special guest in commentary next week to talk about his favorite team. But we have to figure out which one it's going to be. Manny, which one, which one do you would you prefer it to be? I think your division. I want to end with the like one of the best divisions, which I think is AFCs. Fitty fitty. So here we go. Lee, I'm happy either way because we got the South out of the way. <laughs> NFC West. All right. Time to poop on the 49ers. No, just as much <laughs> as I did on the Cowboys. But I even though You're I nice. said, Yeah, you were actually was, pretty nice. I, I was actually nice. Let's see how let's see how Manny does. So with that being said, we got four teams, four exciting teams that we're gonna be talking about next week. We got Very exciting teams. The and, and the Cardinals. And so the we Cardinals. got the, so we got the Cardinals. We got the Rams. Rams not really exciting. Um we got the Seahawks. First place. Which I'm going to have fun talking about. And of course, them Niners. We're going to talk about them. We're going to have another good episode next week. We're going to have fun saving the AFC East for last, which actually is a fun division this year. But ladies and gentlemen, me in the dark, me with my buttons all the way down. That's our show for today. Four. Mike T, what up, what up? What's up, what's up? Yes, yes, it was fun. It was fun. You guys got to see a little bit of, uh, you know, chess. Taco you meat. Guys, taco meat. You guys got to hear about Popeyes. And you guys got to know or understand that we don't understand why Chick-fil-A is not serving on Sundays, but they're in the Falcon Stadium. You got all that here at the Next Up Fantasy Show. We enjoy you guys being here with us. So, wow. And where else can you get that? For Manny B and Manny. I'm just happy because our, our young Will seemed to have a date or something beforehand because he's singing, talking food, his button down shirt. So I feel like, uh, you know, a little happy for him. He's got that big old smile. Did you, you guys saw that smile? Yeah. So I'm excited. Like I said, football's just around the corner. We got a couple weeks. I'm excited for college football. I know Mike is. It's That's around the corner too. So it's yeah, a good time to be alive. And for myself, the man in the dark, the man with the button down. Oh, he's button down. And with a deep voice, it's your boy, Will. So have a good night. Have a good afternoon. Have a good morning whenever you guys are watching this, whenever you guys are listening to this. NFC West. Yay, area. Let's go. See you guys later. See ya.